Uh, Committee of Adjustment meeting, July 22nd, 2021. I'd like to bring the uh, meeting to order, 7 p.m. Introduction of staff members. Um, could we have them introduce themselves, please? Leah Armstrong, Secretary Treasurer. Martina Krejci, Project Manager with Engineering Department. Jennifer Best, Director of Planning and Building. Good evening. Sorry, Jen, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, Derek. <laughs> Jen Martin, Administrative Assistant for Engineering Department. Uh, good evening, Derek Abbott's Manager of Development Planning. Good evening, everyone. Vanessa Witt, Senior Planner with the Planning Department. Good evening, everyone. Caitlin Cosgrove, Senior Planner. Good evening, Mallory Smith, Planner. Okay, we all in? Uh, confirmation of the agenda. Uh, please, we ask the uh, Secretary Treasurer, are there any items to add or delete from the agenda? Yes, through the chair. Um, there were public comments received uh, today for application A10-21 for 5077 Boyne Street. Everybody received that? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. Can I have a mover and a sucker to approve the agenda? Also move. Move by Vice Chair Masters, second by Member Doan. Be it resolved that the agenda for the meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of July 22nd, 2021, be approved. All in favor? Carried. Um, are there any disclosures of pecuniary interest with any of the items on the agenda? No. 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 Um, could I ask for a mover and a seconder to adopt the minutes of June 24th, 2021? Also moved. So. Moved by Member Whiteside, seconded by Member Pillsworth. Be it resolved that the minutes of the virtual meeting of the Committee of Adjustment held on June 24th, 2021, be approved and circulated. All in favor? Done. Carried. Introduction and purpose of the meeting. This meeting is a statutory public hearing held pursuant to the Planning Act. Consider, application, consider applications requesting variances from the provisions of the municipality zoning bylaw and to consider applications for consent to server. Written notice of tonight's hearing was provided by the applicants, prescribed agencies, and adjacent property owners in accordance with the requirements of the Planning Act and applicable regulations. Signage was also provided on the subject properties. As per the Planning Act, the hearing of every application shall be held in public and the committee shall hear the applicant and every other person who desires to be heard in favor for or against the application. Anyone who has expressed interest in making an oral submission through the request to speak form or through email will have their name and contact information recorded by staff. All individuals who have expressed to take part in tonight's meeting have signed up online or through staff will receive a written notice of the decision. Anyone who has not signed up and wishes to receive a written notice of the decision can submit a written request to the secretary treasurer. Please note that an appeal period applies to committee of adjustment applications for minor variances. The appeal period is 20 days after the decision of the committee. For consents, the appeal period is 20 days after giving notice of the decision. Anyone wishing to appeal a decision of the committee of adjustment should contact the secretary treasurer. Okay, on to the application's consideration. Um, application for a minor variance, file number A08-21. Applicant is Mary Lisk, agent Tom Gibson, Tim Gibson. Uh, location 5025, 8th Line County Road 1, Town of New Tecumseh. Um, the purpose of the minor variance, seeking relief from section 5.7. Agriculture zone provisions 
of zoning bylaw number 214-126 to reduce the required interior side yard setback for, for the agriculture A1 zone from 8.0 meters to 2.25 in support of a one-story attached single bay garage. The applicant or agents, please introduce themselves. Hi, good evening, committee members. My name is Tim Gizma, Gibson. I'm acting on behalf of Mary Lisk. Thank you. Uh, do you have any questions or comments? I do not have any questions. I can give you a quick synopsis if you're interested uh, on the application. Sure. Okay, so the original house, uh, 5025, was built in approximately 1957 by the uh, current owner's father-in-law, and it's on 50 acres of land. The neighboring property was severed off of this 50 acres in the mid-70s with that house with that house built. <coughs> Mary has spoken with the neighbor of the house to the west, 5019, and apprised uh, those people of her intentions well before the uh, committee meeting. And as you mentioned, the proposal is to extend the existing single car garage into a two car garage just to bring it into uh, basically the 21st century. Not too many people have a single car garage anymore, given the house is 70 years old. Uh, much more desirable. And the proposal, of course, is to bring it to a side yard setback of approximately 2.5 meters. Neighbor's dwelling uh, on that common lot line is approximately 7.7 .7 meters away, so there's quite a bit of uh, separation. Uh, the natural topographical slope uh, for the site from a drainage perspective goes from north to south. That allows for continued situation of the existing drainage patterns. And any access that needs to be uh, garnered to the rear of the property can easily be accommodated either by the uh, west side of the house, where there's approximately 13 meters set back to the lot line, or through the field at the back uh, from the 49 acres. Um, so from a I guess a legislative perspective, we, we meet the official plan. Uh, we meet all other requirements of the zoning bylaw uh, criteria for the A1 zone. I think the general intent of the zoning bylaw is certainly being met. As I mentioned, just in summary, the, uh, the addition of the single car garage really brings the building into the 21st century, allowing a two car garage. We're maintaining the character of the area. Uh, we're not going to pose any adverse effects to the area in terms of its looks. The height will be the same as the height of the existing building. As a matter of fact, the fascia levels will all match. And that's just a real quick synopsis of the uh, application. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? I have a question, Ms. Uh, Chair Swiller. Member Masters. Um, yes. Through you to the applicant. Um, were, um, were you aware that uh, the engineering has requested uh, for a grading plan, uh, which has to be submitted uh, uh, for a building permit? Just a, yes, just a question. Yeah, you are aware, aware of that. that. And we do have a grading plan already created. Okay, so that's not an issue. Okay, thank you. That's all I had. Member Whiteside. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, a question to Martina, if I could, please. I note in the during the site visit, I noted the two mature silver, silver maple trees located on the common property line to the property to the east. And... Uh, Staff recommends protecting the trees during excavations to protect the root system of the trees, which I think is required. Do we have the uh, right to include that as a condition? Otherwise, how do we know that recommendation will be adhered to? So my question is to staff. Um, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, to Member Whiteside, um, it was requested that it um, a arborist report be included as a condition of the minor variance. Um, we, as staff, feel that um, the request is a bit onerous on the applicant for the minor variance application um, because it it doesn't directly um, doesn't directly relate to the side yard setback. Could I have Martina maybe uh, comment with regard to her request? Uh, engineering department doesn't require this as a condition. We basically, I just did that recommendation because they are mature trees. They uh, all basically what is required is to show some sort of tree protection around them on the grading and uh, on the grading plan when uh, they um, submit for the building department and basically incorporate that in the field. I don't think that need to be as a condition. That's just a good 
practice during the construction. Thank you. Uh, the only reason I brought it up because there won't be a site plan required, but I concur with staff's opinion. Member Pillsworth. I'm just wondering if there's any way that we could add a term on there that they construct a silt fencing to protect those trees during construction. A term is just, it tells you what you need to do. Once construction's finished, they can remove it. Um, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, I believe it is possible to put a condition on the variance. Um, however, that would be addressed at the building permit stage. Okay, but the condition would be, have to be fulfilled by staff if I'm correct. But if you add it as a term, that decision goes to the building department and they know then at least the site plan should indicate there's a silt fence protecting those trees as part of the building permit. Is that not correct? Um, are you referring to a term for term. the variance to yes. be approved? Yes. Um, I, I don't believe we can put terms on a variance. It would have to be a condition of variance. No, you can put terms on them. Um, I'm not aware. I'm not sure if Derek, do you? Yeah, I can that? address that. So we, okay. we, can, we can apply a term if that's what the committee members uh, are suggesting. Um, so it, it, with the decision, if you want to put a term to apply the silt screen fencing for tree protection measures, um, it's up to the committee's discretion to add that as a term if they so choose. Mr. Chairman, I concur with the suggestion by Member Billsworth. I would, if she wishes to move that, I would be prepared to second. Okay, and, and sorry, just through uh, Chair Swirla to staff again. Um, I'm, I'm just asking this with regards to the term. I'm not sure that we would even know how far the roots would go on this. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Like, do we know this 2.25 is going to interfere with the roots? Um, I don't believe we would know how deep the roots are. Um, they, the Public Works Department doesn't regulate private trees. Um, so I, I'm not sure we would know how far the roots extend. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Mr. Gibson, one question I had, do, do you, it's a single car garage, it's not a double, is it? That's correct, it's a single car garage. Now we're gonna turn it into a double. You're gonna turn it into a double? Well, one plus the existing single bay, plus one more bay to make two in total. Well, the purpose of the minor variance is in support of a one-story attached single bay garage. Well, there will be a single As bay a in the sense that it's that is one overhead door. Not two overhead doors for it. So it's a, I'm confused now. Okay. It, um, so in essence, are you adding on? Of, are you adding on to the current garage? Yes, we're adding on to the side of the garage. That's correct, and it'll be served by <clears throat> it'll be served by one overhead door. Okay, so it's still going to be classed as a single car garage. Is that correct? I would class it in that regard simply because it's a single door. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just wanted the termination here. You alluded to the fact that it was double wide garage. Um, a couple of times, and the actual readout is a, is a one-story attached single bay garage. So Correct. it will be, yeah. oh yeah. So it'll be just a single bay, one uh, one door. That's all we'll be serving this garage. Okay. Uh, committee members have any more questions? Uh, sorry, Member Pillsworth. For you, Chair Squirrel, I just wanted to make note on the record. I'm not going to ask for the term because there's no. Nothing to guarantee the tree won't die. Okay. Uh, any other uh, questions from the committee? No. The staff have any comments they wish to make? No. Does anyone other than Mr. Gibson have any other comments from the audience? Obviously not. Um, can I have a mover and a seconder, please? I'll so move. Moved by Member Masters, second by Member Doan. Be it resolved that the minor variance 
A08-21, seeking relief from Section 5.7, Agriculture Zone Provisions of Zoning Bylaw Number 2014-126 to reduce the required interior side setback for the Agriculture A1 zone from 8.0 meters to 2.25 meters in support of a one-story attached single bay garage be approved. All in favor? Carried. Uh, the reason for approval, the submitted application meets the prescribed tests set out in section 45.1 of the Planning Act, RSO 1990. Approved, Mr. Gibson. Thank you very much, committee, committee members. Thank you. Uh, number two, do you have anybody to bring in on this, uh, Lee? Uh, yes, through you, the chair. Um, the, the agent, Sabrina Scotto, is in, okay. and uh, there's two members of the public that registered to speak. Okay. Uh, application for minor variance, file number A09-21. <clears throat> Applicant, Queen Tottenham, Inc., Co. CO, Paul Campione, Agent, Western, Western Consulting Agent, uh, Sabrina Sicoto, Location, 23 Queen Street North, Town of New Tecumseh, Tottenham, Mitre Variance, Seeking re Relief from Section 4.20A3, Open Storage, slash refuse containers of zoning bylaw number 214-126 to permit Moloch refuse containers without the requirement of a solid fence enclosure. Would the applicant or agent please introduce yourself? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Sabrina Scotto with Weston Consulting here on behalf of the owners. Thank you. Do you have any comments or uh, uh, questions? No questions this evening, um, but happy to review the application for uh, members of committee. Uh, given that there are members of the public here to speak, I can provide a brief overview. Okay, would you please do that? Of course. Um, so the application before you is really to address uh, an issue of compliance with the, the bylaw as it relates to the proposed uh, refuge, refuse storage. Uh, on the site. Um, so the, the bylaw, the way it currently exists, does not recognize a underground Moloch system um, for waste disposal, which is currently being proposed on the site. Um, there was a previous open bin storage system proposed on the site, and the revision to a Moloch design comes in response to uh, public and council comments on the application. Um, as a result, a redesign of the site plan has been made, uh, which incorporates four Moloch's, uh, which are underground storage uh, refuge, refuse containers, um, which store uh, the waste underground, um, eliminating the requirement for above ground uh, storage large uh, refuse bins. So um, what we're asking for and what we're seeking approval by the committee is a relief from the requirement for uh, an enclosure of um, what is no longer a traditional uh, waste bin. Um, given that the Moloch's are contained underground, um, the above grade uh, visual impact is quite minor, nor are there um, adverse impacts of uh, odor or other. Um, and so what we've done is um, removed, obviously, the enclosure, uh, which is the requested variance. Instead, we have provided a landscape buffer uh, along the east and south property lines, and that's to um, physically screen uh, the Molochs from the adjacent uses um, and just provide a more pleasing aesthetic uh, to the site design as well. Um, because of the Moloch design, um, private pickup is proposed um, because there is a crane system that comes in and picks up the waste um, from 
the underground bins, um, which is quite different from, again, the above ground in enclosure that's uh, somewhat more onerous um, in, and impactful visually as well. Um, so that's really what we're looking for. Um, again, happy to answer any questions that the committee may have um, or from the public as well. Thank you. Uh, any questions from uh, the committee? Member Whiteside. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through to the agent for the owner. Uh, you indicated there's going to be four of these uh, containers installed, is that correct? Uh, through the chair, that is correct. There is a uh, recycle container, a waste container, a grease container, and then an organic matter container okay, so as well. They're being uh, located on the east side of the property. Now, is that part of the entranceway? Uh, through the chair, the public entrance is located along the west property line along Queen Street North. I um, realize that, but is this a, still an entranceway for staff, etc., to the back? It, it is, yes, uh, staff and deliveries. Okay, so I'm not totally familiar. I, I have the general understanding of these Pollock containers. Uh, what, what height above ground are the lids? Uh, they're probably a few feet, uh, two to three feet off the ground. Um, they're like a rounded system, uh, rounded dome uh, 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 that sticks out from the ground um, and then a lid, obviously. So will this remember, be- Remember white side? Yes. The Dairy Queen in Alston has it. I realize that. Okay. So will this impede the use of that entrance for staff and supplies, et cetera? Uh, through the chair, no. We, we have done uh, an analysis and there are um, full clear walkways uh, for um, pedestrian access as well as no impact to um, service and loading areas. Thank you very kindly. That addresses my concerns. Member Pillsworth. Thank you. I just wanted to check uh, when they say plant and strip, is it trees or is it just grass that they're putting in? Uh, through the chair, it's um, actually shrubs and bushes. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member Masters. Um, I'm just curious, this, uh, you say this is uh, a uh, public waste pickup. Uh, would the same recycle trucks that come and pick up our public waste right now pick, pick up these Moloch systems? Uh, through you, Chair, to the uh, applicant? Through, through the chair, sorry, it is private uh, pickup, not um, public. So it would be a private uh, crane truck that picks up the waste. Okay, uh, thank you. And as far as um, um, uh, maybe this is a question through to engineering, um, uh, Chair Swirler, um, um, this type of system, you mentioned it's uh, in uh, being used in maybe in the Dairy Queen right now. We, um, we, we, sorry, Alan, we, we approved it for the Dairy Queen before they erected the new one. Okay. In, in so, so, so this, this system already has a good history then from an older standpoint, because it mentions in the here, it also, um, it also, um, um, uh, takes care of the odor issues typically, uh, seen by other, uh, waste dump systems. Correct. Yep. Is that, is that, is that, that's why I said engineering. If we have these other systems working in the town, is that, is that the, uh, the, the standard that we're seeing right now that they are fairly odorless? Maybe through you, Chair, to engineering. Maybe. Uh, through the Chair to uh, Member Masters, we have done them in a previous development, site plan development. I am not aware of any other issues so far. You can, uh, uh, contact the manager of the engineering. I'm not really involved in site plans, but I'm not aware of any issues with order. Okay, thank you, uh, Martina. I guess what I'm saying is the town's not aware of any uh, typical order systems with these new Moloch systems that are being put in place. Any other questions? Um, does the staff have any questions they'd like to ask? No questions from staff, Chair. Okay, any questions from the audience, if you would? Start with Loretta Stevenson. You wish to speak? Does the staff have any questions they'd like to ask? 
No questions from staff, Chair. Okay, any questions from the audience, if you would? Start with Loretta Stevenson. Sorry, for you, the chair. Um, yep. If you don't mind, may I just ask whoever's in the audience that has the YouTube feed going on in the background, if you could please turn off uh, your YouTube feed and um, just uh, listen through the meeting here. No questions from staff here. Excuse me, Ms. Stevenson. You have to unmute. unmute. Yeah, go ahead. Excuse me, Mrs. Stevenson, can you, we can't hear you. You need to unmute. Are you anybody else getting any sound? No. No. Uh, we need a signboard that says you're on mute. You're muted. Yeah. Is um. Is there mute. anybody else that that you have in line to speak, Lee? I think she's uh, unmuted, but it's like her microphone's not turned on because she doesn't have the microphone with the slash through. Oh yeah, that's yep. right. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, through you, the chair, there was another uh, registered member of the public who wished to speak tonight, uh, Dolores Ray. Can you ask her, bring her up? Uh, she's on mute as well. She's already spoken. Dolores, are you in this meeting? If you are, if you can please unmute your mic. It, uh, you have the opportunity to speak to okay. the committee right now. Is that, can you hear me now? Oh, that's better. Okay. I am here with my, I'm here with my mother, Loretta Stevenson, who is the property owner of 19 Queen Street. So we're here together instead of having two different Zoom meetings. That's fine. Okay, I uh, just wanna say that now that we understand how this MOLIC system works, we have no real objections to them applying for this change in the um, collections of the waste, et cetera, and the storage of the waste. We Thank actually think that's much better than what they originally had planned. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for letting us join. Not a problem. Thank you. Uh, Dolores Ray, and did somebody want to let her in? I, I was here with Loretta Stevenson. We're here oh. together. I'm sorry, you're both That's together. Okay. You got it. Okay. It's been a long day. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Member Masters, did you have a comment? No, Further that's comment? it. Uh, no, I'm uh, I'm quite happy. Thank you, uh, Cheswell. Okay. Um, uh, Member Doan has a Question. No, a member don't would like to move Thank the you. application uh, for it. That was, uh, my, that was my next question, but I appreciate it. <laughs> I'll second the motion. I will still move. Should it be approved? Yeah. Moved by member Doan, seconded by member Whiteside. All in favor? Be it resolved that the minor variance A09 21 seeking relief from section 4.20 A3 open storage slash refuse container of zoning bylaw number 214, 2014, excuse me, dash 126 to permit Moloch refuse containers without the requirement of a solid fence enclosure be approved. All in favor? Carried. The submitted application meets the prescribed test set out in section 45.1 of the Planning Act RSO 1990, approved. Uh, application for consent, number three, file number B08-21, Toviso Capital Corporation and Daniel Stilo, Vanessa Simpson, Innovative Planning Solutions is the agent. Location is 5077 Boyne Street, town of New Tecumseh, Alliston. Consent seeking to create two new lots, 
from 5077 Point Street, Alliston. Would the applicant or agent please introduce yourself? Uh, Mayor Swirler, uh, sorry, Chair Swirler, before I can, uh, can I just mention that this is also attached to A10-21? Um, Two applications. We're going to look at them both at the same time then? That's what I thought, that's what I was thinking. Okay, I, I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah. Thank you, sorry to butter. That's all right. I had it written down, but I, I thought we had to go one by one. If we can combine them, is that okay, and Lee? Yes, Street, the chair, um, we can review them together, um, but if you could, if the committee could please do the consent prior to the minor variance, um, that would okay. probably work out better. Okay, so carry on. Uh, okay. Now, consent would be the B application, correct? Yeah, B0821. Um, would the applicant or agent please introduce yourself? There we go. Can you hear me? You can. Yeah, okay, good. Because I was having issues with the speakers there for a few minutes. Um, okay, so good evening. Um, I'm just going to go through a, a brief presentation. Would I be able to share my screen? I think so here. Um, is it not popping up? There we go. Can you see the presentation? Got it. Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. So let me make that big. Okay. All right, there we go. So good evening committee members uh, of the public and staff. My name is Vanessa from Innovative Planning Solutions. And tonight I am here on behalf of the applicant to present the applications for consent and minor variance for the property at 5077 Boyne Street in Alliston. I'm gonna keep my presentation pretty short, but I thought I'd just cover some of the key, key items. So obviously the subject lands is located here at the intersection of Boyne and John W. Taylor Avenue. The site is approximately 2,034 meters square with frontage of 36 meters along Boyne Street with a depth of 56.3 meters along John uh, w. Taylor. The lands currently contain a single detached dwelling, which has a registered second suite dwelling within it. So there are two units within the second or within the single detached dwelling. The, the surrounding area is comprised of uh, single detached homes and the lands are zone designated urban residential and zone UR1. So the purpose of the application for consent is to obtain approvals to create two new residential lots resulting in a total of three lots. So you can see here on the map, we have the existing house and, and this would be the retained lands. And then this would be lot additional lot number one, additional lot number two for a total of the three lots. These two new lots would permit the development of two new high high end um, single detached dwellings. It's important to note these two new lots are uh, about the same size, if not larger than the majority of the lots on John W. Taylor. So they really do keep with the, the character of the surrounding area and the newer subdivision. The resulting lots um, would create three parcels that are over 565 square meters in size. The two new lots would have a fronted, minimum frontage of 15 meters with the existing lot having a frontage of 22 meters, which now ends up becoming frontage on John W. Taylor because this is the shortest um, abutting frontage on a road. So current frontage is along Boyne, new frontage would end up being along John W. Taylor. Driveways and whatnot orientation of the house would, would stay the same. So we do understand that a road widening is required along Boyne, we've shown that in the hatched, as well as a daylighting triangle. 
So I highlighted the reorientation of the front yard setback because this really is what uh, triggers the need for the minor variance. The minor variance relates to the existing setback between the garage and the adjacent property line. Uh, because this is now the front yard along John W. Taylor, the rear yard is now here beside the garage, which has a, an existing setback of approximately four meters. So the minor variance is really asking for this reduction, the four meters, which is an existing condition. No changes are happening to the existing structure. Um, we're not building anything to create this variance other than the development of these two lots and the reorientation of the existing parcel. Um, so like I said, it's a, it's a four meter, whereas 7.5 is required. Again, it, it is considered minor. Our planning report included in the application covers those details in depth. The general intent of the rear yards maintained through appropriate setback, drainage will be accommodated, trees will be preserved, and no trees that are uh, along the property line are intended to be harmed in any of these applications. Uh, drainage and grading will be reviewed through the development applications as outlined in the conditions. And uh, the existing dwelling will continue to function very similar to how it has been for years past. So in conclusion, the application of consent will create two new lots for a total of three. And the minor variance application recognizes the existing condition and the deficient rear yard setback for the retained lot, lot three. The proposed severance applications represent an appropriate and efficient use of land within the settlement area, and the minor variance does not change the use or function of the retained plants. Thank you. Thank you. Members of the committee, any questions? Mr. Uh, Vice President or Vice Chair uh, Masters? So I'll let uh, Member Pillsworth go first because she had her hand up first. Oh, I'm so apologize. Yes. That's okay. That was fine. Thank you very much. I just had a couple of questions. If you could just clarify for me, in the report it says a result of a severance. By the looks of those plans, it's definitely two severances with a retained. Am I correct? Yeah. Yes. Through okay. Chair. Yes, that would be correct. It's likely a typo. Missing the S. Thank you. And then through you, Chair Swirla, another question that I had uh, with regard to this. Uh, how many draft transfers would you be seeking for this uh, certificates for these lots? Would be two, correct? Two transfers to be registered for each lot, is that correct? Through you, Chair, yes, we would be registering two new lots. Okay, through you, Chair Squirrel, I'm suggesting that we add another condition that lot one receives their transfer first and it's registered on title before the next one for lot two is registered on title. That's a suggestion that I suggest be added as a draft condition if all the committee agrees with it. That way it ensures that if the lot two gets this transfer registered first, it automatically creates that other lot. And we wanna make sure we do them so that it currently as to for the lots, okay? And then with regards to the uh, minor variance, since we're speaking about that too, I'm just suggesting that we uh, reword uh, re it. It says meters as a result of a severance be approved. I, I would suggest that we reword re it that uh, as a result of certificates being issued for both lot one and two registered on title, that it be effective. Because in that way we ensure that the certificates are registered for both of them and that minor variance is not stuck out there and it's still okay for a minute for them to do the four meters. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Um, Member Master. Um, uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, second what Member Pillsworth have just suggested. Uh, uh, it's excellent. And by the way, uh, through to the applicant, uh, Vanessa, that was a very good application. I wish all our um, um, applicants have come in with a, a good overview like you presented. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my questions uh, through you, made, uh, Chair Oswala, to the applicant, are, are you aware of all of the conditions that are on this application? Through you, Chair, yes. Uh, myself, as well as the applicant, have uh, and the, the landowners have reviewed the conditions and we have no concern addressing them. Okay, so that includes the tree uh, arbor, arborist report, grade surveys. Yep. 
and the fact that the um, any any um, of the new sewers that have to be hooked up are to be borne by the owner. Yes. And um, part of the conditions. The additional that's part of the condition, yeah. And of course, the public works access yep. um, requirement permit for the lot. So, okay, thank you. That's yep. all I needed to know. Thank you. Member Whiteside. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through to the owner's agent, uh, did I understand you correct to say that the, it previously under the previous owner, it was a single family home? Did I hear you say there's currently two residents within the dwelling at the present time? Through you, Chair. Yes, currently there within the existing single detached dwelling, there are two residents. The second, the second suite or apartment, whichever you prefer to call it, is registered. Uh, they did go through the formal process with the town, with the building inspectors and everything. And um, that is a registered uh, second unit. Is there, we had a correspondence from one of the neighbors indicating that maybe the third residence uh, proposed within the garage of that, is that correct? Yes, there currently is not a third resident uh, unit in the garage. That is something that's not permitted by the bylaw and the, the owner is aware of that and currently does not have any tenants in that unit. The unit's not been converted into a living space. Thank you and I concur with the suggestions uh, made by member Pillsworth. Any other questions from the committee? Uh, the staff have any questions whatsoever? For you, Mr. Chair, no. Uh, any questions from the audience? Is there anybody else? Um, through you, the chair, um, no uh, request the, to speak for this yes. application, just uh, the written comments that were received today. Just a letter that we received today. Mr. Chair, further to that, so the concerns that they addressed uh, in their letter regarding drainage going to the south down the hill. So that'll be addressed uh, by I the town. That's, I believe that's in the conditions. Okay, thank you. If I'm not correct. Yeah, it's in the conditions. Yeah, I thought so. Thank you. Member Doan? Chair Swirla, I will make a motion. <laughs> For the acceptance of the file B0821, be approved as presented with the amendments as put forth by Member Pillsworth. I second that. All in favor? Uh, be it resolved that the consent application B08-21 seeking to create two lots from 5077 Boyne Street Allison, be approved. And all in favor, fine. Thank you very much, Mr. Simpson. Thank oh, uh, member, uh, or Chair Swirla, we still have one other. We have uh, eight, 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 21. Well, sorry, we're not doing it separate. We're doing Thank the you. consent. Now we'll do the variance. Thank you. Yeah. That's what I was <laughs> saying. So all you need is a mover. Do you want a mover? Member or Chair Swerda? You just moved it. No, Member, Member Pillsworth is. Member Pillsworth oh, just moved it. Sorry, hold on a minute. Hold it, guys. All right. We got <laughs> we got the consent done. Now right. we move. Now we move. Right. Yeah. To A1021. Yeah. A1021. Do I need to read that or do you just want me to yes, through you, the you, chair, read you could just read what's I on thought, page eight? That's what I thought. Thank you. Okay, file number A1021, Treviso Capital Corporation and Daniel Stilo, Vanessa Simpson, agent Vanessa Simpson, Innovating Planning Solutions is the agent, 5077 Boyne Street, town of New Tecumseh, Allison, consent seeking to create two lots from 5077 Boyne Street, Allison, minor variance seeking relief from section 6.9 urban residential zone prov provisions of zoning bylaw 2014-126 to reduce the minimum rear yard setback from 7.5 meters to four meters on the subject property. Now, any question, any further questions? None. Uh, any further questions from staff? None. 
anyone in the audience? None. Ms. Simpson, did you have any further questions? No, no you're no chair. Um, thank you. Now you may move it. <laughs> Member move it. I approve it. I'll second the approval. Did you get that, Lee? Be it resolved that the minor variance 10 21 seeking release from section 6.9 urban residential zone provisions of zoning bylaw 214 126 to reduce the minimum year, uh, rear yard setback from 7.5 meters to 4 meters on the subject property be approved. All in favor. Member, excuse me, Chair Swirl, I just want to make sure that's approved as amended. Yes. Right. Okay. I just want to be sure. Great. Thank you. All in favor. All in favor. Carried. Thank you. Have a great evening. The, you're uh, welcome. the submitted application meets a prescribed test set out in section 45.1 of the Planning Act RSO 1990. Thank you very much. Application number five. Um, AO7-21, applicant Keith Turner. I believe this is being deferred. Is that not correct? And they still got the embassy. Board in. I'm sorry? Vanessa, got, Vanessa report's been received. Has it, Vanessa? I threw you chair, chair soil to, to Lee. Yeah. Um, through you, the chair, uh, there's no applicant uh, here for this application. They're not present at the meeting. Um, since they saw the staff report that the recommendation was for deferral, but it's up to the committee to make the decision. So I will leave that up to you. Right. Um, 10 Radcliffe Road, Town of New Tecumseh, Tottenham. Purpose of the minor variance seeking relief from Section 4.19.3b, conformity requirements within the Oak Ridges Moraine area of zoning bylaw number 2014-126 to reduce the required setback from the Oak Ridges Moraine environmental protection zone, requesting relief to the required setback to be 30 meters. The setback will apply to a proposed rear addition, new in-ground swimming pool, rear wood deck, attached garage, mudroom, covered stair, and proposed covered porch. Um, any comments from the staff? Uh, Harris, well, I would bring a motion to defer for up to three months. I tried to do that, but... Uh, no, we can... Uh, but I think Member Masters had... Go ahead. I, I, I'd like to... Um, um, uh, you know, so, uh, propose that uh, we approve um, the application uh, pendant on receipt of a favorable report from the uh, Nottawa um, Conservation Authority. I thought so. Uh, Member Doan. Yes. Any questions? I will not second that motion. My no, motion no. was to defer up to three months awaiting the the analysis to be completed by the NVCA uh, and their recommendations. It is a, not it is condition. A, it is a recommendation of the t of uh, staff to defer. Yes, Member Whiteside. I would second the deferral as uh, staff recommended, and it has been moved by Member Dole. Member Pillsbury. Um, I'm just going to ask for clarification, Chair Swirla. Which motion are we is on the floor here? We seem to have two motions going. Well, the minor variance is, is what the, they've deferred. Yeah, but through you, Chair Sparrow, Member I believe a, Member Doan made a motion and then Member Masters made a motion. So I'm trying to figure out which uh, motion we're going to for a second or a discussion or what we're doing. I'm just, I'm lost. I second it, Member Doan. Okay. We'll I believe that, I think second. that we've got a problem with the motions here. We'll deal, we'll deal with Member Doan's motion first. Okay. To defer for, for 90 days, what was it? Three months. Three months, three months 90 days, okay, three months. Okay. All right. Okay. And that's, that's deferred as per, as per the, the uh, 
uh, recommendations of the of the staff. Correct. Okay. And through you, Chair so I'll, I'll remove my motion. Okay. Thank you, Member Masters. Thank you. Okay. All in favor. So be it. Um, any questions from staff? No nobody. questions from staff, Chair. And nobody in the audience. Um, be it resolved that the minor variance seeking relief from section 4.19.3B conformity requirements within the Oak Ridges Marine area of zoning bylaw number 214.126, excuse me, to reduce the required setback from the Oak Ridges Marine environmental protection zone requesting relief, required setback to be 30 meters. The setback will apply to proposed rear addition, new in-ground swimming pool, Excuse me. <coughs> Swing pool, real wood setback uh, will apply proposed rear addition, new in ground swimming pool, rear wood deck, attached garage, mudroom, covered, covered stair, and proposed covered porch be deferred for 90 days. All in favor? Carried. Hold on one second here. Deferred until such time satisfactory comments from the Nottawazaga Valley Conservation Authority regarding the application are reserved, received. The submitted uh, application, um, sorry, that's it. Uh, application for consent, B11-20, B, B12-20, application NHD Development Limited, uh, agent is Austin Chitty, Ibsen, slash Sabera, location Tecumseh Street South, roll number 4324-040-001, Dash 10400, Town of New Tecumseh, Beaton, consent application to create a new lot within the Beaton settlement area boundary. Would the applicant or agent please introduce <coughs> yourself? Um, good day, Chair. Um, good day, committee members. My name is Austin Shidi uh, Iberson, um, development engineer for Subara Group of Company. I'm representing the owner, NHD Development. Do you have any questions or uh, further comments? Um, no, I don't. Um, just a quick, uh, I, I'm willing to give a quick synopsis of the application if uh, the committee uh, accepts that. Please do. Um, so uh, NHD Development is seeking an application uh, for consent for application B1120 and B1220 um, within uh, the new to concept uh, development boundary area. Um, those uh, those two applications currently have two model homes um, sitting on it, which was constructed as part of um, the Valley View Residential Development Subdivision. Um, the model home agreement, which was entered into with the town, um, actually expires in 2020, um, which was ex expired in 2020, which was last year. Um, the model homes were built I think around 20, 2015. Um, so NHD is seeking an application of consent um, so as to be able to seek, furthermore seek for occupancy of those two mother homes. Because if left as is right now, they technically would just rot away unoccupied. Um, hence the, the need for this servant. Any questions from the committee? Member Whiteside. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have three questions, if I could, please. The first one is to the agent. Could you please explain to me what type temporary water and wastewater services you are intending to provide? Um, yeah, so uh, we, we actually intend to provide um, um, water connection because um, currently, as is, the motorhomes are dry services. 
uh, are not connected to the municipal infrastructure. So we actually intend to connect um, the two model homes to the municipal infrastructure, i.e. Um, a water service connection and also a sanitary connection connecting directly to the municipal, um, the municipal services. Um, this is temporary because um, New Tecumseh Street um, eventually in future would undergo um, some capital works improvements where the permanent or the ultimate um, infrastructure would be put in. NHD development understands that uh, an undertaking would be taken, um, mandating us to remove the temporary services once the ultimate uh, um, connection, when the ultimate infrastructure is being done. Thank you. My next question is to the uh, staff, planning staff or engineer, whoever wishes. Uh, can, should we make it a condition that these uh, temporary water and wastewater uh, services be uh, connected prior to these uh, uh, requested uh, consents being granted? Yes, through you, uh, Chair Swirla, to Member Whiteside, I was actually going to note that. Um, so I didn't include it as a condition, which I might have <laughs> forgot to do that. Um, so you can add it if you would like. Um, on the other hand, or however to note, um, occupancy permit from the building department wouldn't be issued for people to live, uh, to move into these without it being connected to water, because as um, the applicant said, um, they're currently dry model homes, so they don't have occupancy permits for people to live in. So if the committee would like to add that as a condition, we can add some wording there uh, for our conditions seven and eight, I believe it would be. Well, I, I guess if an occupancy permit will not be, definitely not be granted until such time as they're connected, I'm satisfied with that. And my final question is to the agent, are you aware of the conditions outlined in Appendix A and Appendix B? Yes, I am. And is the owner knowledgeable then? Yes, he is. Thank you. Well, I, I actually working towards uh, meeting all those conditions. Member Pillsworth. Thank you, Chair Swirla. Uh, I just wanted to understand something there was talk about with regards to the occupancy for the building permit. Um, I believe that the conditions have to be fulfilled in order you to be able to do a building permit on any of these lots, is that correct? Like I know that the houses are existing, right? And all you're doing is giving occupancy. So those servicing would only need to be done, but does this not have to be registered as a lot first before a building permit can be issued for them to hook up services? Through you, Member Pillsworth, I believe you have it correct where it would need to be created as a lot first so that they could sell it off and get a building permit for occupancy. That's what I was thinking. Okay, so then I would suggest that we probably add another condition in there that uh, one consent gets done first and registered on title and then the other certificate or draft transfer or registered transfer can be issued for the next one so that we know for sure that they're not uh, causing problems. Um, with regards to that, the other thing is with regards to the draft plan, the subdivision, will they be seeking to have further model homes put on the lots and be seeking further severances from them? Sorry, sorry, can you say that again? As you're waiting for your draft plan of subdivision to go forward, right? You could still want model homes to be placed on those other draft plan approval to be able to sell off those other lots and stuff like that. Will you be seeking that and then try to seek another couple of severances for those model homes that might be existing on another draft plan? Um, no, this, these are the only two model homes existing right now within, uh, within the subdivision. So these are the only two we have. If we intend on building future model homes in the future, we definitely would need to enter into an, into an agreement with the town and get the model, um, model homes um, agreement and the, the entire process all over again. But right now, the only two model homes we have within the draft plan is what we're seeking for severance right now. Okay. And then through you, Chair Sreela, to stop, I just have one more quick question with regards to condition six, a warning clause of agreement of purchase and sale to the potential buyer. Is there a potential buyer that is aware of the servicing that needs to be done and what's going to be, it's temporary and stuff like that? Because I'm not sure how you're going to be able to see a purchase and sale in order to clear this condition. Um, we, do, we do not have uh, a purchaser right now um, as it stands because 
right now it's it's, it's still a motor home. So the intent is to actually um, get the get the, the consent approved and put in the the temporary services and like the con like the condition states it would have to be part of the purchase and sale agreement um, if we intend on going down that line, which is selling off to a purchaser. We, we fully haven't decided what we're doing with it yet. We might decide to um, lease it out um, for rent or we might decide to, to sell it. But regardless of what we decide to do, we, we can't move forward without um, getting the, the consent first and also installing the temporary services. For you, Chair Squirrel, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get this clarified because I'm not quite understanding it. I'm not sure how the condition will be cleared because you'll have to see, the town's going to have to see something in order to say that that condition has been put into a purchase and sale for the potential buyer in order mm -hmm. for that to be fulfilled. But if you're not receiving that document to know that warning clause is in there, how do we know that this condition can be fulfilled? Oh yeah, we could, We I, I, I don't believe we have any issues uh, um, having the town see the um, a copy of the APS if, uh, if required or that condition being put in if required. I, I don't believe we have any issue with that. And we're also signing an undertaking that states that that will be there. No, I, I don't see us stating that it's an undertaking to be taken there. No, no sorry, the, the undertaking says that we would be re we, we will be removing the temporary services and upgrading it to the permanent um, to the permanent condition. So we will be signing that undertaking uh, and giving that to the town. So if, if, uh, if we're signing an undertaking saying we're removing the temporary services, then technically that uh, I believe that takes care of of whatever concerns the town might have. So is, it, is that a condition? Sorry, Member Pilsner. Yes, the undertaking is a condition. It, number five, yeah. point five on the no, appendix. If you go to number six, that's the one I'm talking about, gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I know, but the undertaking was number five. You're pointing out to Nick, there actually was an undertaking to be signed. You're talking about six, I guess my comment, it could maybe be put under the same type of undertaking provided by the um, landowner, but that has to happen. So just add in an undertaking being a second undertaking. There should be something there because we yeah. have to know for sure that condition can yeah. be fulfilled, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Because they're not going to see a purchase and sale because they need no. a lot. No. Right. They need to just add the word undertaking for point six on both B12 and B11. Is that Member Pills work? Yeah, no, that's exactly where I'm going. Thank you, Member Don. I appreciate your assistance on this. Mr. Chair, I certainly concur. I have concerns as to who will be obligated to do that. And if person A buys one, if person B buys the other, are they going to be responsible? How are they going to know that time of acquisition? So um, part of this, uh, through you, uh, Chair, so a part of the purchasing agreement here says that uh, um, the developer is required to provide a warning clause the agreement of the purchase and sale, advising potential buyers that servicing and grading work along the frontage of the property will be required in the future and uh, of the subdivision servicing works. I mean, um, could something be tied in with that? I don't think that addresses it, Mr. Chair. No, it doesn't address that number. Sir? We could add a statement. In. Can I just jump in, Chair? Please. Just been asking here. I'm just uh, just looking for clarification. I think we're just as lost as you are right now. Um, Member Pillsworth, can you just clarify? So we're talking about condition six. Um, and so in, I, what I get from this is instead of a warning clause in a purchase and sale agreement, because we're probably not going to see a purchase and sale agreement, you're looking for the new owner to sign an undertaking that they will go through. Uh, the decommissioning as well as Sorbera or some some other mechanism to note that that they know this is going on? It should be done before it's sold or rented. No, but they're not, they won't be having the permanent service again. They're wanting to do that prior to the, the subdivision being completed. 
Yeah. So, so I think I I, I think um, members Pillsworth and I and I I hope I'm getting you correct. Like your concern is us having a condition that states that the temporary services will be removed or will be part of the agreements and purchase and sales agreements. That's that's what you're referring to. Uh, through you, Chair Spirillo through to the applicant. So what I'm trying to understand is when you're purchasing and sell a property, you're purchasing a lot, right? The yep. lot, it's all there, the legal description and everything else. The only way there would be warning clauses is we were clearing a draft plan of subdivision or something along that line. So this, because this is adding on here, I'm trying to figure out how the town is going to have you provide a purchase and sale agreement to the town stating that this owner has this warning clause in it and it's acceptable and you proposed owner is acceptable for this so they understand what's happening, right? Because there's nothing registered on title. So anybody buying this isn't going to know this. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm just trying to make sure that there is something so the town is not responsible for something. There's been knowledge to whoever the potential purchasers are, purchase owner, the rentee, the tenants, somebody Absolutely. knows exactly what's taking place on this property. Correct. Yes. So yeah, Vanessa, I, I, I'm okay with you want to put as an undertaking there that that's something that's done. Like, I'm not sure, I'm not a solicitor to determine how I can change this condition, but I just think that we're setting the town up to fail trying to fulfill a condition. I think it definitely needs to be clarified. The new owners would need to be aware of it and it needs to define who would be responsible through to the agent. Is it your company that's prepared to do this even after the properties are sold? Yes. Yes. So that's the that's the that's the undertaking we are willing to, to sign that we, the developer, we, the, the owner are going to um, change that temporary service from a temporary service to, to the permanent service when that new Tecumseh Street is being constructed. That's an undertaking we are willing to sign with the town and which that condition is also going to be put in the agreement of purchase and sales if we choose to go that route. Um, we might decide to just list it out, like to rent it out, whereby it just has temporary services. But regardless of whatever right, um, route we take, we are willing to sign an agreement um, uh, or sign a condition with the, with the town stating that these services would be our responsibility to upgrade once new to come such streets is being finalized. I'm not a I'm not a lawyer, and uh, certainly uh, I think uh, we need that to have dra be drafted by the town solicitor. Yeah. But we have to put something, if we're going to approve this this evening, we have to have some clause in there. that uh, As a condition, yeah. That, that has been my understanding, and that, that, that has been the, the understanding I've had with uh, the owner and the, and the town. So far, so good. Town staff. So does staff have any uh, wording that we could possibly use to address our concern? Or, or defer it till next month until it's done properly. For you, Chair Sferla, I'm just reaching out to Mr. Abbott's. Uh, like, I'm not trying to disrupt a, this going forward, I just want to ensure that the town has a condition that can be fulfilled. So if there's something else that you could provide maybe assistance of how we could reword this condition, I'd, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, sure, uh, I can be assistant. Uh, Martina, I saw she unmuted. I, I, this was a condition that was put forward by the town's engineering department. So Martina, I'm not sure if you have any alternative language to speak to here, but or perhaps it can just be an acknowledgement that the owner will include that on a purchase and sale agreement. And, and that, that's something that Austin could easily provide. Um, so at least we have something on file and writing that when a, when a purchase and sale agreement is created, then we, it, there's been an acknowledgement uh, from Austin that, that it's been done. I, uh, Martina, do you, can you speak to that? Yeah, I think engineering is okay with uh, some sort of notification to the owners. The, no the owner, potential owner or the potential buyer need to be notified that in the future, because we know it's, it's not going to happen within the year. So basically the intent here is to notify the owners that that servicing work will happen 
on the frontage of their property, maybe, you know, in the future, five years from now, who knows? So intent is that the owners or the potential buyers are notified. So whatever the mechanism can be done, either undertaking acknowledgement, something on file that we, uh, that the, the developer basically not, that the developer would notify these potential owners about that service and work. So, so member, member Pillsworth, would an acknowledgement address your concerns for that if, if we were received? Well, my, my problem is, is through you, Chair Swirlis, right? an acknowledgement is great, but there's still nothing out there for anybody that's looking to purchase this property. There's nothing registered on title so that we're living there for three years. I mean, it's who knows, who knows how long this road's going to take. And they've sold the property off now. And then who's going to know that there's something going to be taking place and it's only temporary servicing there? Like, I'm just trying to figure out, usually, I don't know. Can we, can we not register that on the on the title through the consent application? I was going to suggest that, but I didn't know if I should suggest that you do a registration on it. My, further, further, my question is, if it's if they decide to rent it, mm -hmm. then is it not incumbent upon uh, the development company um, and their responsibility before they ever sell it? Before they yeah, ever they'd sell still it. be the owner, Chair. They'd still be the owner. These people still be the owner. If well, that's what I'm saying. You got to put the you got to put the responsibility on the on the on the applicant, Mr. Chair. So if they do sell it, it's already covered, Mr. Chair. And my further concern is that uh, not only the first buyer, but it could be several years, five or ten years before the rest of the development takes place and the servicing becomes available. So the the unit could be sold several times. So there seems to be more merit that something would be put on title because otherwise it would get lost. Yeah, we do we do have we do have um, a phase two development that goes all the way to um, from New to Concept Street. And I, I believe as part of the con conversation we had, it's it is or it can be put as part of the um, the conditions and going forward with that uh, phase two um, development, which we intend to do, which whenever we intend on developing the phase two, we're gonna have to work on the new Tecumseh streets and the intent or the idea is at that time, that's when we intend to um, perform the, the upgrade or put in the permanent um, infrastructure because that's when we will we'll be um, improving the new Tecumseh streets south south. I understand that, but at the same time, depending on how long that takes, there could be several orders to be for each of those homes. Who knows? Chair, if I could ask a question of uh, uh, Derek. Please do. Uh, Derek, um, I'm sure this applicant has had to put forth a letter of credit or uh, cash donation to the town to satisfy certain requirements of the development. Would that be correct? Uh, I'm not aware of any uh, cash donations or <laughs> to, for this development, would, can, can you elaborate on that a bit more? Well, normally on a development, they're required to put forth for paving, for soft services, for hard services. A certain percentage of the cost is given to the municipality uh, held in escrow until such time as those items are complete. If they well, don't I'll, get complete, sure. the town then would do it, similar sure. top of, on the Hillcrest subdivision underneath the water tower. I'll, I'll defer that. never got finished, and they I'll defer the that. money. Sure. I'll defer that question to Martinez. I see she unmuted. I, I know she has the answer. Okay. Uh, through the chair to member and this uh, securities, we're talking about securities which developer need to post in order to finish the subdivision design. That's usually done when the subdivision agreement is being executed or uh, during the pre-servicing work when they pre-servicing. So what, whatever the case is. So in this case, subdivision agreement may not go forward several years mm. from now. So okay. it's not an uh, option at this time. Because that's what I was thinking. If we could attach it to that for the completion, the money would be set aside. But if it's not there, then we can't attach to it. Member Pillsworth. I, through you, Chair Swirla, um, I, I think that what we need to do is we should register condition five and condition six on title so that everybody knows with regards to, because there's going to be costs associated with I it. Yeah. Right, yeah. I think that should be registered on title. So if, if everybody's okay, I'd like to make a motion and that condition five and six of B1120 be registered on title as amended. 
and that uh, I support the and 11. B12. I have, I have one question, Member Pillsworth. Sorry. Was there, was, Member Pillsworth, was there not a change on both five and six, uh, a warning clause? You wanted to change that to read? I wanted them to be registered on title. Okay. So if they register well, on title, anybody that's looking to buy those lots, right, will have that. That's there. They understand what's going on on the property. And, and that's for B11 and B12, Member yeah. Pelsworth? Yes, yes, please. Yeah. If the members are all in favor of that, yes, please. I, I certainly concur with that. Registering on title is the only way that we can guarantee it will be there. All in favor with that motion? Oh, I just one further question before we move forward. Sure. Um, point seven on B1120. The owner retains an ISR certified arborist. I just don't notice it on B12. Is there any reason why um, condition seven wasn't put on B12? Staff? Three. Through you, the chair to member Joan. Um, so the public works department provided those comments, our town arborist did, um, and he noted that B12, yeah, the one that it's not on uh, is vacant and there's no trees. So he didn't need need to request that arborist. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, any more uh, questions or comments from committee? Any questions from staff? There's uh, I assume nobody from the audience. Is that correct? We, Mr. Chair. Yes, the, would... the chair. There's no members in the audience today for this okay. application. Mr. Chair, I would ask that the motion as amended be read out. Um, Lee, can is it Vanessa reads that out or the actual change in the in both? I just want to know what the amended wording, the additional wording is going to be added to each of the recommendations. Can I not call it so, a warning clause? I'm sorry, for 1120 and 1220, for 11, you got to do them separate. Correct? I realize that. Yeah. Okay. Let's deal with 1120, <laughs> number six. Can somebody read the amendment to that? Um, is it Vanessa or Derek? Or Leah? Who um, through those? the chair, yes, Vanessa is working on the amended version right now. Um, she, just, she just needs a second. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, I think I have it, Chair, if you're ready. <laughs> okay, just give me a second here. Okay, um, so I, I'm just gonna read both of them if that's okay. Um, so the recommendation uh, is that report CA 2021-23 be received um, and further that consent application B11-20 to sever land for the purpose of creating one new lot within the Beaton Settlement Area boundary be approved subject to the conditions of approval in Appendix A uh, subject to the amendments to add conditions five and six to be registered on title of the property. And then it'll be the exact same wording for B12. And, and uh, through you, uh, Chair Swirlett, uh, Vanessa Staff, thank you very much. The only other condition I would suggest we add is to B1112. The uh, transfer be registered on title first before B12 is registered, please, or it given to them to register, please. Perfect, okay, add it. Thank you very kind, I appreciate that. 
They have to be registered separate, is that correct? Yes. All right. Okay, any further comments? From any further comments from staff? Uh, I'm sorry. Um, nobody else in the audience. Uh, can I have a mover and a seconder um, with the conditions as, as amended? I'll second the motion. Be it resolved that the consent application B1120 can I do them both at once or do they have to be done separately? A separate, please. Okay. Be it resolved that consent application B1120 to create a new lot within the beaten settlement area boundary be approved as per um, uh, Appendix A. Uh, changes to and I'm doing 11, I'm, do, I'm sorry, I'm doing 20 first. Mr. Chair, maybe the best so, just assist with the words. So five and six, amendments to five and six, is that correct? On appendix, on appendix A, right. All in favor? So moved, carried. The submitted consent applications are application is consistent with the provincial law policy statement informs the county of Simcoe and the town's official plan and complies with the zoning bylaw. Reason uh, okay. Move move by move by Pills, member Pillsworth, seconded by member Whiteside. It resolved the consent application B1120 create an, a new lot within the beaten settlement area boundary be approved. Sorry, I'm reading, trying to read both at once. Sorry. As for the amendments. Right. Is that B12, uh, member chair, That's or B11? No, it's B11 because we have to do them separately. Right. Okay. So we already voted on B11. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everybody was in favor. Yeah. Right. So now yeah. we need B. Maybe Vanessa can assist with the wording. She had it all there earlier. Yeah. Today. Well, they, what they've done is combine the two of them. But now that we've made two separate amendments, you have to read them separate. Is that not correct? correct. Okay. Okay, so we got eleven twenty done. And twelve twenty. Uh, be it resolved that the uh, consent applications for B twelve twenty to create a new lot within the beaten settlement area boundary be approved as per the uh, um, amendments to uh Number five and number six in Appendix B. Correct. Correct. Uh, all in favor? Okay. Uh, all right. Sorry, Member Chair, we should get a mover yeah. for that mm -hmm. separate. So I will move that motion. I'll second it. Okay. Moved by Member Doan, seconded by Member Masters. Reason for the decision, the submitted con consent application are consistent with the provincial policy statement conforms to the County of Simcoe and the town official plan and complies with the zoning bylaw. Be it resolved that the consent application for 1220 to create a new lot within the beaten settlement area be approved with the condition of uh, five and six on appendix A. Uh, all in favor? Carried. Okay. New business. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you have any applications? Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, members. Mr. Chair, do we have Bye. any applications for next month? I'm sorry, Paul? 
Do we have any applications for next month? Yes. There are four uh, potential applications to be heard at the August 26th, 2021 Committee of Adjustment meeting, two previously deferred and one new minor variance and consent applications. And now that we're in phase three, are we going to be able to meet in person? Leah? It's up to... Uh, um, through you, the chair of the committee, uh, staff have not been informed of any changes to in-person meetings yet. Um, once we have an update, we will let everybody know. Thank you. Any other questions? Can I have a mover and a sh uh, seconder? Um, so move, we adjourn at 8.25 p.m. Move by Ms. Member Masters. Seconded by Member Whiteside. At meeting is adjourned 8.25 p.m. Done. Can you... All in favor? All in favor.